Hey, welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name's Riddle, and uh, today we're going to be covering how to supplement your chicken food in a way that also really makes your chickens healthy. And uh, I think you'll find the video really interesting. Like all grains, you've probably noticed the price of grains have gone up substantially. And if you have any amount of chickens, it can be expensive to feed them. So what do we do? You know, what do we do? Well, when I hatch my chicks or when I get my chicks from the feed store, either way, I always start introducing vegetables and weeds to my chicks at a really young age. So they get a really nice taste for eating vegetation. And the reason I do this is so when they mature, if I ever get low on feed or if anything ever happens, like another COVID thing or a food chain thing, they will eat the weeds from the yard and various uh, vegetables and herbs and things. The second advantage you have to starting out your chicks young, feeding them vegetation and herbs and what have you, is a lot of the herbs will act to boost their immune system. Even if you're not free-ranging them, you may get the same flavor and health and results of a free-ranged chicken, even in a small to medium-sized pen. I free range my chickens, but they can be very destructive. So now I'm thinking, hmm, maybe that was just a great idealistic version of where what I want my chickens to have. Now I'm thinking I'm just going to build a large enclosure around them because they're just doing too much damage to the orchard and, and the rest of the yard, no matter how much I feed them or try to contain them. So I'm going to give you... I've done a lot of the work already, but I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis on what I do in the morning. So first thing, I take my large mixing bowl and I will throw in some grain, mixed grain if I have it, uh, or any garbage from the house, any food that's getting kind of uh -uh, um, stale bread, rice, uh, anything really. And I start with my big steel bowl. And then after I do that, I come out to the garden and I look at what I got. And I always start with growing extra zucchini because zucchini is healthy, it's delicious. And as you know, you always have too many zucchini. So what do you do with them? Well, they actually make great chicken food. So you just take a cheese grater with the large, you know, the large grain the large uh, shred, the handheld one, and you just grind down and a couple large zucchinis. I mean, that's pounds of food and the chickens love it. And so what I do, I go through my zucchinis. They also love to eat the leaves. So anytime you see a leaf yellowing, that's never gonna recover. So I will cut that off at the stem and I will, do like several of these at a time to make it worth, you know, worth the time. And I just take a pair of really good scissors or garden shears. I'm gonna do a really crude version of this because you get the idea. And then I'll just uh, cut it into smaller, like bite-sized pieces for them. Sorry, I only have one hand. I bought the headset thing, you know, for my camera, but I keep forgetting I own it. I gotta pull that out. So anyway, you just chop it up, the, the leaves, into bite-sized pieces. Like, we can roll this and cut it into shreds, and they will eat the hell out of this. And even this big, juicy stem. Another nice thing about giving them this vegetation, when you cut it down to bite-sized pieces, and again, a pair of good culinary scissors works better than this, but you can see what I'm doing is that this also, not only does it give them tons of living food and vitamins, but it also hydrates them. So when you're dealing with the heat of the summer and, and feeling the need, you know, you're giving them super dry grains that can dehydrate them even more. So giving them the chopped up zucchini leaves and other vegetables, you have, you're doing two things. You're giving them a, a bounty of vitamins and minerals. You're getting rid of 
dead leaves off of your plants that need to go anyways. And you're also hydrating the chickens and it helps, helps them in the heat, of course. Another thing I take off, I take off any of the zucchini that's getting funky, chop that up. The flowers, I take off the flowers when they're done, cut those up and those are great, full of beta carotene and what have you. Weeds and herbs cut those up and put it in it. I even chopped up some banana leaves and put it in it. This amaranth, it needed to be trimmed because the amaranth, it's, seeing, it's starting to flower now. So I trim the tips off of that, cut it up into nice small pieces, mix it into the grains. Purslane, purslane makes an excellent chicken food, but they're kind of picky about it. But if you chop it up and mix it up into their you know, in with the grain, they will eat it. They will eat it. Now see, you see this big leaf here and it's starting to yellow. So in the next day or so, this is gonna be a great salad for the chickens. And they really love the taste of the zucchini leaves. Coming up around these flat leaf chives, those will be cut into bite-sized pieces and added into the chicken food. Any of this chickweed, thus the name, these nasturtiums, mugwort. So mugwort and some of these herbs also act as like an anti-worming, anti-parasitic thing in addition to um, giving them tons of nutrition. So I'll take this mugwort and cut a stem off and strip the leaves and cut it into really fine shreds and mix it into their food. Strawberry leaves, thyme, lemon balm, any of these herbs, sage, any of these herbs can be cut up. Rosemary and added to your chicken food. Mint, I feed them a ton of mint that has to be great for them. Even my pineapple sage, and they really love fennel. And look at how the fennel's growing. I mean, that's just gonna be, it's just gonna go to waste anyways, right? Chop that up, they love it. They love it, they love it, they love it. And slowly, I mean, if with a little research, if you don't know your edible weeds already, chicks, chickens can eat about anything. There's not a lot that can, there's not much of anything that can poison a chicken. Now, the second thing I do, which you'll find fascinating and really money saving, is if you have an orchard, or maybe there's a fruit tree near you or a family member has one. Around this time of year, they start dropping the bad fruit. And I collect all the bad fruit from the apple trees and the pear trees, bugs and all, because that's just protein. And again, I shred it with that cheese shredder, just like I did with the zucchini. And... Uh, Usually, not a morning thing, but usually closer to three or four o'clock, I'll give them their second meal and it'll be an entire colander of just shredded fruit from the orchard. And you can guarantee my eggs taste like paradise. <laughs> These chickens are eating probably better than billionaires. Fresh organic food, it's crazy. And they love it. Here's another thing. So all these grapes... These are, are smaller variety grapes, but I had a lot of bot, bad ones. These ones are a little bit diseased, too much moisture. So instead of just letting the birds eat them, what I do is I cut them off to get some more air in the vines and you know load them up in a bowl along with my shredded pears and apples. And can you imagine the nutrition? Now this is just something that would have gone to waste and would have just drawn rats. But instead of allowing it to go to waste, I'm bringing my property, my homestead, my food forest round circle and not letting anything go to waste, using everything. The chickens will also use, here's a good example, a little pear tree, see the pears laying there? Those ones look good enough for humans to eat though, but I'll, I'll take those inside and, and uh, if I get a better one, I'll feed those to the chickens. So here's our party out here. They've already been fed this morning. They're picking away at everything. But we're gonna go ahead and put this out for them. There's the grapes. Hey ladies. And these are the, this is all the shredded pear. And again, the shredded pear also helps to hydrate them. 
and gives them tons of nutrition. Now they're not going crazy for it right now, only because I just brought out their breakfast to them. But today I wanna to stay busy. And so I'm gonna just give them a lot of food and hope that this keeps them from sneaking over the fence and ravaging the garden. Oh, there's that, look at this beauty. Yeah, he's a little too violent with the females and I'm gonna have to cull him soon, but I already bred him and got chicks. My goal was to take this breed, which is uh, also Ossotrope, Ossolope, an Australian breed, which is one of the biggest meat chickens and is, is known to lay the most eggs per year. And then I bred it with a California white, which is also a really great egg layer. So now this year, that's one of its children. What I'm gonna have is this beautiful crossbreed of a larger version and bigger egg layer of the California white. You gotta think of those things. So I noticed, I have a different brain than most people do, when I was at the feed store in the springtime that uh, I kind of forced conversation on people. And I do this because, you know, we're in, we're in public. And when you're in public, I think it's a good opportunity to be social and I think that's normal. But people have become weirdos and they don't talk to each other because they've been brainwashed by the news and by Hollywood that everyone is stranger danger. And I think it, it, there, there's nothing more dangerous to a society than, you know, public silence. So I force conversation on people in a really friendly way. And what I noticed really quick at the feed store, talking to 15, 20 people waiting in line to get their spring chicks, was that I was the only person who did the research on all the different breeds of chickens they had available that day. Everyone else was just there to get like cool looking chickens or pretty chickens. But I had very meticulously looked for three characteristics of, of what I wanted in my chickens. And none of them had to do with aesthetics or what they looked like. Number one, personality. I wanted a, a, a more gentle chicken because if you've got a high strung or a temperamental chicken, they're going to be, it's good, they're going to be more prone to, to fighting and pecking the other chickens. Number two, most, the most prolific egg layer, of course. And number three, the best meat chicken. And so I did really, really well. The only problems I've had is with this rooster, roosters in general. They're just so mean. And I even took off his, his, uh, his spurs in the back and it still didn't do anything he is still see the see the hen with her little saddle he still clung the hell out of them so now that i've got his genes i think he's going to get eaten soon yeah sorry buddy or i'll have to keep him in a separate coop but if i keep him in a separate coop that's almost like worse than killing him because he's used to his freedom and being the pimp daddy so that's all my advice today for supplementing your chicken food as you could, as you, another thing, oh, another thing, if you're going for, you know, being fully independent with chicken food or just being prepared if you can't get chicken food, another great thing is to buy compost worms. Now, compost worms are different than regular worms. You may live in a part of the country, though, that you can just dig worms out of the ground or like sometimes in Ohio or in, in uh, that part of the country, you just water your lawn and the night crawlers come out at night and get up the kids, grab them. Like you do that the, the night before you go fishing in the morning. Now that's a great, great supplement to feeding your chickens. But if you want something more convenient and you want to be more earth friendly, then get compost worms. Uncle Jim's worm farm has been around forever. And it's like, I got my worms from him something like 15, 20 years ago and kept them alive. So I just use these plastic totes and you want to drill hole in the bottom of them. And then it's kind of great to put the tote inside of a tote and put like a terracotta, uh, the the bottom of a terracotta like a terracotta saucer down here or something some rocks or something because the juice the the worm tea is going to come through the holes in the bottom and that worm tea makes an incredible fertilizer for for the garden and for flowers and then you basically you just throw your weeds in here you throw all your paper products in here your coffee grounds you can put 
everything in here. The only thing you don't want to put in here is uh, meat and um, meat and citrus because citrus um, and fruit because fruit and citrus will ferment and turn into alcohol and it's not good for the worms. But look at this. It turns it into pure soil. Here's our red wigglers here. See them? And all this is pure worm castings. And then, so now we've got this incredible protein source. See them running over here? Because they know. And you can just dig out of here and they just keep breeding and breeding and breeding. And so now I've got this great source that's not only managing the garbage in the house, a huge percentage of it, turning it into pure organic soil. It's making me a very expensive, high-grade organic fertilizer and it's feeding the chickens so it's a really good investment the only thing you know, you have to learn how to keep your worms alive correctly and you want to keep them out of the sun so they don't get too hot and uh but i'm gonna let you do all the research on that or if you're interested i can do another video about how to how to uh grow slash husband compost worms all right I think that's pretty good. You get the general idea. Uh, thank you for watching this long. If you like my quick money-saving tips, garden wisdom, homesteading advice, please subscribe. It helps share and like. Bye.